Hello and welcome back to another video and before we get started today I must say a massive humongous thank you to you and every single one of you because we have just hit 8,000 subscribers which is completely and utterly bonkers so just a massive thank you it is insane how large this community has grown of wonderful and awesome people who have decided to hit the subscribe button, support the content I create, support the work I do, it is the best feeling. At the start of lockdown, at the start of quarantine, I had no idea what I was going to do on a weekly basis. I didn't even know what I was going to do on a daily basis. So I thought, you know what, instead of just sitting around doing nothing, waiting for this whole thing to blow over, why don't I make some content? Why don't I put myself out there, do some photography, do some videos and have some fun? And it's honestly some of the best fun I have had in such a short period of time. Every day thinking of new ideas, what I can create, what I can share with you guys. So to have such a warm reception and amazing feedback from that has been incredible and it's just the best feeling. So I'd like to say again, a massive thank you. Let's hope we could continue growing this community of awesome and wonderful people. And I hope you do enjoy today's video. So I've just got myself two new cameras. I've got a Nikon D50 and a Nikon D70. Well, these aren't really new cameras. They're new to me, but they are very well used. And we'll start off with the one that doesn't work because there's a story behind this camera right here. I bought it for £40 because I wanted to do a photo challenge to see what I could do with a very old camera and what photography results I could get. Boy off eBay, 40 quid, got it, and the sensor didn't work. The guy said that the camera was in full working order and for 40 quid for this type of photography at this age, you would expect that. Nope, it doesn't work and the guy suggested to me, oh, do you have it in manual mode? Do you have the shutter speed set really high so you can't see the exposure? No, you just sold me a fucking broken camera, so I got a full refund, I messaged him, two minutes later gave me a full refund. So I think he knew from the start this camera weren't working. So we've now got a Nikon D50 again that doesn't work. If you don't remember what happened to my last one, it's in the eye corner, I kind of uh, dropped it in some water you could say. But now I've got a question to you, how should we destroy this camera? Tell me in the comment section below, I'll make a video about it, if I could do photography around that area or however you want me to destroy it, I'll try and take some awesome photographs and we could do it for a future video because it's broken, it ain't working and also can we appreciate how disgusting it looks? Who decided at Nikon, I hope the person lost their job because who decided silver was a good idea for a Nikon? Look how vile and disgusting it looks. I described it over on Instagram as the ugly duckling that never turned into a swan. Silver on this camera makes it look cheap, it makes it look crap and it is honestly the most vile looking camera I have ever seen. Now moving on to the camera that does work, we have got the Nikon D70 and I bought this from MPB Photographic for £29. I got this whole camera for 29 quid, which is pretty amazing to say the least. Now I'm not going to go into all specs because I'm going to do that when we're going out shooting with it, so I can give you a bit of a download, but it's kind of spectacular that you can buy used cameras for this cheap. Now I, this is a challenge for me to see what I can do with such a cheap camera and such an old camera and what photographs I can achieve. But it's also a little test to see if you are on a really strict budget, like bottom of the barrel strict, and you wanna try out photography, is this type of camera or these type of cameras for less than 50 quid worth it? Well, that's what we're hopefully gonna find out. So let's begin and let's go now and do some photography. Now one thing I need to mention before we get started is the lens that we are going to be using with the D70 and this is the ultimate cheap camera expensive lens. We're going to be using this 50mm cine lens right here and look at that, that is a £29 camera with a Zeiss cinema lens on it. I don't think this has ever been done ever in the world. Has anybody ever seen a D70 with a cinema lens on it? Um, no. This is not the lens we're going to be using. No, no, the lens we're going to be using today is this 50 1.8 because, well, it's the only, like, smallest lens I have for my Nikons now, apart from the 24 to 70, but obviously that's a Z-mount lens. This is F-mount, but I always recommend people as a second lens going for a prime lens, so this lens really should give us some good images and hopefully give this camera 
a little bit more of a chance to get some better images rather than just a standard lens. Now in terms of the sensor on this camera, it is an APS-C, so crop sensored camera, and it has a massive, humongous six megapixels. That's it, six on this camera. Um, and that is quite spectacularly shit, uh, because you think in today's cameras, we have like 60 megapixels, 24.5 megapixels, 45 megapixels on sensors as sometimes standard, but it also shows dividends on how far these types of cameras have come. Just to give you some perspective, Instagram wasn't even created when this camera was released. Because of the very low megapixel on this camera, you can't really crop into an image because you will just see how low quality it is and will really ruin your shot immediately. So you have to get your framing perfect in camera or your shot is just gonna look rubbish. So that really begs the question then, does this camera take decent photographs? Yes, no, maybe is my answer because the other problem with this camera is basically the LCD screen and for some reason it's not taking photographs. Also apparently it struggles with focus. That's an easy subject, it's, it's a hill, how are you missing it? We're gonna have problems mate, that's a massive, that's Scarborough Castle, how are you missing this? It's just what it's trying to focus on and it's missing. That. That is my frame. So the LCD screen, um, it is really small. I don't know, <laughs> look how small, that is it. That is it, that little square right there is it. And this is honestly, and obviously, the worst LCD screen I have ever seen on the camera. Uh, the other problem is as well is, do you know those, oh, not the IPS monitors, what are the other ones? Um, TN panels, that's what they're called. This is basically what this monitor is on this camera. It's a TN panel because if I go like that, I can't really see and it goes all weird colour like. And the same on the other side. Also looking in the back of the LCD screen, I really don't have confidence in these images whatsoever because even in the back of the camera, they look really, really naff. So it's down to the editing to see what I could do with these photographs. Now with this camera as well, a couple things that are actually nice with the body is, which is not saying much, is it does have the shutter and aperture button right here, so you can actually change them on the go, rather than some cameras, I think, some entry level DSLRs, actually don't even have an aperture button or a shutter button. And also something that's really interesting with this camera is, it goes all the way up to 8 thousandths of a second shutter speed. Now usually that is for like the top cameras, because I think most entry level DSLRs only go to 4 thousandths of a second. So that's a bonus with this camera as well. Not like you're gonna be doing much sport photography with it because the focus is naff. Now in terms of storage for this camera right here, we're not using the conventional SD cards, we're using these compact flash cards right here. And I've just been shit on. I've just been... Oh, that was so close to my face. Oh, you disgusting fecker. Um, but anyway, on to the point I was actually making before I just got attacked by a seagull anus. Um, this camera right here doesn't use the conventional SD cards. It uses these compact flash cards right here. This is an eight gig one. I got it from eBay, um, but I had to do a bit of research to actually find the correct one because it was very unclear which one you actually needed. Now I knew it wasn't an SD card, which was a surprise when I got it because I was like, oh, this is my SD cards. Even if it did, I found with the D50 that like a 64 gig was too powerful for it. So I had to really go on eBay, really look and dig 
for these old ones but luckily after a bit of digging I did find there is quite a lot of these still available and it does give me quite a lot of shooting uh, with this camera with this memory card I've also done some photography already it will allow me to do 631 photographs raw because surprisingly enough as well this camera does raw so hopefully that will give me more flexibility when I am editing these photographs back at home I don't know if you can hear me the next test we're going to be doing is a low light test but at the moment I'm going to play with some balls this yes 30 points if I do another 30 points if I do well missed you So I just won some tickets, you know, that ain't bad going for throwing some, some balls at some clowns. But, on to the ISO test. Now you join me in this arcade, not just so I can lob balls around, but to test the ISO. This camera has an ISO of 200 to ISO 1600. That is it. The Nikon Z6 that I'm filming on right now has ISO 100 to 51200 natively so as soon as you start introducing any little bit of noise into this camera the photos are probably going to get really rainy this is where it comes in dividends to have an aperture of 1.8 on a prime lens the closest we're going to get to sport photography with this <laughs> i'll go on number one So the low light test is done. I don't know how the results came out. Honestly, you'll be a better judge at this point than I will because you would have at least seen the results. But on the back of this LCD screen, I cannot tell. I don't think I can zoom into the images. I literally can't find a button to zoom in if it even has that as an option. Now, it definitely hasn't been like a hour gap since filming. I definitely didn't go home to pick up two extra batteries to the Nikon Z6 because I forgot them and had some lunch. No, 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 it's only been like 10 minutes. Yeah, I generally did forget my batteries for my Nikon Z6 and I had to go all the way back home to go and get them, but we're back. The only battery I didn't charge though was this camera battery right here. Because it's a DSLR, I didn't imagine it would need charging, and it doesn't, but it keeps coming up with this weird problem where it's seeing CHR on top of the camera, and I think it's basically telling me to charge the camera, yet the camera is on full battery, so I don't know if there's like a faulty issue with it, um, but yeah, these cameras are very unpredictable with their issues sometimes. It's like holding a grenade. You just don't know when it's going to go off. It's going to go off, but you just don't know when that problem is going to arise. <laughs> That's so stupid. Something else worth mentioning with this camera is the frames per second. It does four, and I don't even know if that was even a second. And that is not the biggest number, and it's not the smallest number I've actually ever used. But when you've been shooting with a Nikon Z6 that does nine frames per second and up to 50 photos continuous, it is quite a downgrade. So if you're trying to do sports with this type of camera, you're probably not gonna be able to get any decent results. You're gonna have to nail it first time, or you're potentially gonna miss. I think we've done all the shooting we need to today to make a final verdict on this camera. I just need to go home, edit the photographs and have a look at the results we're able to achieve. I feel like looking on the monitor as best I can tell, we got some okay shots, we got some good shots and we got some average shots. So it's just so difficult to tell on the back of the LCD if any of the shots came out. And it's it feels like a DSLR, it feels like a place I have been before. I mean, the place I left was probably Immaculate Five Star Hotel. 
And what I've come back to is a garbage dump that's been let on fire, dropped to the bottom of the sea and left there for 10 years. But does that still equate to some really good photography? Well, I'll have to go home, find out, and then we can go through the final verdict and see yay or nay on cheap cameras like these. Now it's time to make the final verdict. I've got my notebook right here, I've got the camera, and the first thing we're gonna start off with was the photographs this camera was able to take. Now I pretty much crapped on this camera throughout the video, but at the end of the day, it did take all those photographs and it did it really well. As long as I got my exposure bang on right in camera, I was able to get some really great shots. And then in editing, I was able to apply some presets to make the images really pop, stand out and get that desired look I wanted onto each of them. Speaking of presets, there's currently an eight pack of presets on my website right now with 50% discount for the next five days. So if you wanna go and check them out, the link is in the description below. There's also some before and after sliders. So you can see what these presets could do to your images. Again, if you wanna check them out, the 50% off link in the description below. So my final verdict on cheap cameras like these is yes, they are good if you can get one that works at least. And also if you are on a strip budget, again, it's a great entry point into photography. Now you are sacrificing a lot of the modern technology in today's DSLR cameras, such as better focusing systems, better ISO range, better frames per second, better monitors, everything like that you are sacrificing. But again, you might be paying less than 60 pounds for a camera and then you can actually invest in extra lenses for the future so when the time comes to upgrade your body and move to a new camera you have the lenses set up and ready for that transition so yes if you want a tight budget these are really good but if you can spare the extra cash and go for something that is a bit more modern has that extra tech i would recommend it but i'm still really surprised at the photos i was able to achieve with this camera. I think we can also agree that at the end of the day, this is a camera that does take some really great images. And what's more important about photography is often not the gear up to a certain extent. It's about the person behind the camera and how he can utilize the tools at hand to create some awesome looking photography that is really well thought of, really creative. So there's a lot of things to apply to that. But at the end of the day, as long as you're creative, as long as you can take great photographs, no matter what camera you have in your bag, in your hand, you should be able to get some fantastic looking results. So I think that calls an end to today's video and I really have enjoyed creating today's video. I really enjoyed doing a photography challenge and would like to do a lot more of these in the future. And hopefully you have liked today's video as well. And if you did, please drop a like, maybe consider subscribing if you're not already and turn on the bell icon so you're notified for whenever I release a new video. And until next time everyone, take care, Keep creating, stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Whoa.